first ever labor union for college athletes in the U.S. is now a step closer to reality. The National Labor Relations Board certified a union to represent members of the Dartmouth College men's basketball team. Under an agreement that still needs to be negotiated, players would be paid for their performance. As Hendrik Sabrandi report is, reports, it is not without controversy. Springtime and women's softball can be an uneasy fit here at Metropolitan State University of Denver. Games are never guaranteed. Sometimes they predict we'll get an inch of snow and we get six and then we spend a lot more time shoveling the field off. Cami Grammerstorf and Shelby Robb are members of the Roadrunners squad that's reeled off 19 straight wins now. Their success on the diamond merely supplements their main mission at the school, getting an education. Honestly, we're treated very fairly and well as student employees on campus. So Unpaid employees. Clear across the country in New Hampshire, members of the Dartmouth College men's basketball team, unhappy with that status, recently voted to unionize, allowing them to collectively bargain over pay, practice hours, and health care benefits, a first for college athletics. It is historic. Kelly Evans Kelly teaches Denver sports Denver. management at MSU Denver. Definitely something that will shake up the NCAA as we currently know it. It's turnover bond. Sports can be huge revenue generators for the National Collegiate Athletics Association. Dartmouth players argue they should be compensated just like any other school employees. College athletes can already profit from sponsorships using their name, image, and likeness. These schools, especially the Power Five schools, have really seen an uptick in their revenue streams off the free labor of student athletes. It's an issue of basic fairness and human rights, Evan says. On the other hand, she points out, paying student athletes could have a devastating impact on schools like hers. This is really going to affect athletic department budgets, especially budgets that are already small. It's going to affect the people who are in softball, who are in um, you know, non-revenue generating sports. At Division II schools like this one, at the Division II level, it would change things quite a bit. And the reality of our sport is we would probably be one of the programs to be cut, which is kind of scary to think about. Anderson. Many questions remain. How would unionization affect Title IX, the federal law requiring equal opportunity for men and women? Let's go! Could players go on strike? Dartmouth has appealed the ruling authorizing the union. I stand in the middle and I, I see the benefits of this. I kind of see the downfalls and what's to come. So um, I think it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. The players union is not something these two who are pursuing degrees in exercise science and sports management would consider. It would almost undermine being a student first and take away the importance of being here to get an education. And that's what we're here for. Even as they post some more wins along the way. And Rick Sabrandi, CGTN, Denver. To talk more about this and what it means for the future of college sports, I'm joined now by John Willihan. He's a professor of sports law at Syracuse University. Thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you for having me. Well, John, what does the Dartmouth basketball decision mean for other sports programs? Well, it's still to be decided. Um, I mean, the case still has to go through appeal. It's going to be appealed um, to the full National Labor Relations Board. Um, but if it's upheld, it's significant because what the Dartmouth case said was that student athletes, not just scholarship athletes, but student athletes are employees and therefore they had the right to unionize um, to get fair wages um, for their work. So it's definitely going to have a significant impact, um, especially as the story before us said, you know, small programs at Division II schools and even small Division I schools. What is the impact this could have? What, what kind of impact could this have on larger institutions? We know that there are uh, changes abound when it comes to Division I football programs, for example. We heard NIL, uh, the way that's changed recruiting. Um, what do you see here? with this decision with Dartmouth College, which is a lot smaller. Yeah, well, um, it's just the first step. Um, right now in the court system, there's a number of cases that are coming up. One deals with the uh, University of Southern California, which is actually uh, going through the labor board seeking to find the uh, PAC-12 and the NCA joint employers, employers of the students. Therefore, 
they could unionize directly with the uh, NCA, and the NCA could pay them directly. Um, so that would be significant. Another case is a Johnson case, which is coming out of the Third Circuit. Um, and the Third Circuit has held that Johnson and other athletes are employees of the universities that they, they play for, and therefore should be compensated a fair market uh, wage, basically minimum wage at the, at, is what they're seeking. And really, is it worth it? I mean, will this have um, so what this has? What's this going to play for large universities? A school like you know, um, Ohio State University just came out and announced that they generated over two hundred fifty million dollars from their athletic department. I don't think it's going to have much of an impact on Ohio State. Um, when you go down the kind of pecking order, schools like uh, UConn and University of Massachusetts those types of schools, um, it could have a significant impact on them. What about the student athletes when they look at uh, this potential possibility? Uh, I want to get your thoughts on if you've heard anything from other kids outside of Dartmouth College, if this would impact maybe the school that they would choose to play for, if there was a union or not. I don't know if this is something that would make it more favorable to attend or, or if it depends on the school, the large, if it's a larger school or not. I think I lost you. John, can you hear me? J John Wilhan, um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, sorry we lost his signal there. And here are some other sports headlines. U.S. billionaire Ron Burkle is selling the National Women's Soccer Club San Diego Wave for a record league record of $113 million. It is one of the most successful new clubs in the league, leading in game day attendance. Women's basketball viewership in the U.S. is up 60% across all major sports networks. Fox saw the biggest rise with the average hitting 981,000 viewers. And with March Madness around the corner, ad revenue in the women's tournament is hitting new heights. A 30-second ad in the championship game now costs $500,000, up from less than 100000 just a few years ago.